Hey guys, it's Mr. McNeese. Um, what we're going to be talking about today in this video is we're going to be talking about slugging averages and QB ratings. Um, so uh, this kind of goes off what we were talking about yesterday um, with averaging final grades. Uh, only this time we're going to be using uh, baseball and football uh, formulas as our work. So it says one example of a weighted average in sports is a batter slugging average or percentage in baseball. The slugging average, average or SLG is calculated using the following equation. So we've got a couple of letters here. Um, singles, uh, S represents singles, and then we can say D represents doubles. We can say T represents triples, and HR represents home runs. And then at bats is AB. So AB is at bats. And so what I want to do, anytime they give us info, I want to identify all of these parts and then simply plug them into this formula that they give us. Um, and so in the first, in his first season with the Yankees, Babe Ruth set a record for slugging average that stood for more than 80 years. It says in 1920, Ruth pounded 172 hits in a 458 at bats. Uh, his hits consisted of 73 singles, 36 doubles, 9 triples, 54 home runs, resulting in a base count of that right there. Now it says when his total number of bases, 388, is divided by his total at bats of 458, the result is 847. The slugging percentage for the season, uh, which is his slugging percentage for a season. This record was broken in 2001 by Barry Bonds, who had 411 total bases and 476 at bats for a slugging average of 863. Now what we want to do is we want to find the slugging average for a player with f the following statistics. And they give us their singles, doubles, triples, home runs, and at-bats. And so uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug all of these values into the formula. So I've got uh, slugging, let me change colors here, we've got uh, slugging percentage is equal to, we've got our um singles and remember singles is if we go back up real quick one times our singles two times our doubles three times our triples four times our home runs so i'm going to have one for our singles we got one times 68 plus two times 40 plus uh three times four plus four times 16. All divided by our at bats, which is 320. And if you multiply this out, you should get well, 1 times 68 is 68, 2 times 40 is 80, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 16 is 64, all still divided by 320, which should simplify to 224 over 320 or 0.700. So uh, this person right here was batting a slugging percentage of 0.700. Now it says reflection. Is it possible to have a slugging average of more than one? So take a second to think about this. Pause your video and think. Can you have a slugging average where it's greater than one? Okay, so now that we've thought about it, um, well, it is actually possible. So we can say yes, but you're going to have to hit a lot of home runs because home runs are the most valuable, right? They're worth four times whatever home runs you get. Meanwhile, base singles are like, for example, only one times. So we could say yes, but uh, you have to hit a lot of home runs. Okay. And so as an example, let's say, uh, we have a person who gets 100 singles, um, 50 doubles, 10 triples, 30 home runs, and then their at bats is uh, 320. So we've got all these values here. Let me clean that up a little bit. We've got all these values here, um, and we just want to plug them into the same formula. So we're going to get um, 1 times 100 plus 2 times 50 plus 
3 times 10 plus 4 times 30, all divided by our AB, which is 320. And if you simplify this, you should get uh, 350 on top. So all of this adds to 350 and then still just 320 on bottom, which would give you a slugging percentage of 1.04. So it is possible, but you got to hit a lot of home runs. And it says, theoretically, what is the highest possible value for the slugging average? Could a player ever achieve this value during a baseball season? Give an example and explain or explain why none exists. So try and think for a second. What is the highest you could possibly have in a slugging percentage. So take a second, think about it, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so the first question I gotta ask you is, what is the best possible outcome of going to bat? If you went up to bat, what is the best thing you could possibly do? It's to hit a home run, right? So if somebody was gonna get, let's say for example, they were just to get all home runs, no singles, no doubles, no triples. So our formula here would be slugging percentage is equal to, well, they got zero home runs. Let me do this. Um, singles are worth one. Well, you got zero of them. Doubles are worth two. You still got zero of them. Triples are worth three. You got zero of those. And then home runs. Now, if somebody went up to bat, got a home run, went up to bat, got a home run, went up to bat, got a home run. Every single time they went to bat, they got a home run, right? So every at bat is a home run. So what we can do for home runs is say that our number of home runs is equal to our at bat. So we can just put at bats right here. Anytime they go up to bat, it's a home run. So I'm gonna put that up top. And on the bottom is just whatever our at-bats is. So if this is five, meaning they went to go bat five times, this is also five, right? So this equals zero, this equals zero, this equals zero. So I can just get rid of those. And so what I'm left with on top is four AB over AB on bottom, okay? And anything on top that's the same on the bottom, cancel out, and we're just left with four on top. So our highest possible slugging percentage is actually four. Now, the next one I want to talk about is uh, NFL. So it says the NFL uh, rates quarterbacks for stat purposes against a fixed performance standard based on the stat achievements of all qualified pro passers since 1960. The system follows, the system allows passing performances to be compared from one season to the next. Follow categories, the following categories are used to compute the quarterback rating. So we've got Percentage of completions per attempt, uh, percentage of touchdown passes per attempt, percentage of interceptions per attempt, and average yards per attempt. So really quick, I just want to tell you the way you can get these percentages, okay? Because sometimes they're not going to show it to us. Most of the time, it's not going to tell it to us. Um, but the way we can get these percentages is by creating a ratio, okay? So percentage completion, that's just completions divided by attempts. Okay. Same with touchdown passes. It's just touchdowns divided by attempts. Uh, interceptions is just interceptions divided by attempts. And then the last one, YD for yards gained per attempt, that's just yards divided by attempts. So anytime we want to get these ratios, we have to divide using attempts. And then they have a formula for us, uh, QR for QB rating. Uh, is equal to all of this mess. And you see that it's 25 baseline plus 10 times their completion percentage, 40 times their touchdown percentage, minus 50 times their interception percentage, plus 50 times yards divided by 12. And so as an example, it says for the first two games of the, of the 2008 season, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo completed 45 passes. So he completed 45 passes in 62 attempts. Uh, for a total of 632 yards, four touchdowns, and two interceptions. And it says verify that Romo's quarterback rating for those games is approximately 113. Round each value to the nearest tenth. So first thing I want to do, I want to find each of these percentages. Okay, And I'm going to do that using the info that it gives us. So for 
uh, percentage completion. That's just completed passes, 45, divided by attempts. So we got 62. So as a percentage, um, well, if you divide this out, you're going to get 0. Uh, 726. And as a percentage, that is 72.6%. For uh, um, touchdown percentage or percentage touchdown, we're going to get uh, 4. 4 divided by 62 attempts, which gives us 0 0.065 or 6.5%. For percent interception, we're going to get uh, 2 divided by 62 or 0 0.032 or 3.2%. And then the last one, YD, it's simply 632 divided by, that's his total yards, divided by 62 attempts, which is equal to 10.2 yards per attempt. And now this is not a percentage. This last one is not a percentage. Okay. So not a percent right there. So we're just going to leave it as is. And then now we can start putting these into our equation. So QB rating is equal to uh, 25 baseline right there plus 10 times our completion percentage of 72.6 plus 40 right here, 40 times 0.6 or 6.5, uh, excuse me, minus. This one is a minus, minus uh, 50 times our interception percentage, which is 3.2, uh, plus 50 times our yards per attempt, so 10.2. All of this divided by 12, okay? And so if we calculate all this, you sh should get 113, Point four. So 113.4 is his Q, uh, QB rating, so it is in fact approximately 113. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these last two up to y'all. Um, the key, they're the same format as the first one or number three, um, but the key for these will be in today's folder. Uh, if you want to check your work and if you still have questions, feel free to message me or uh, ask me in person. Thank you.